All right, well, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's tackle an example problem. So we have box A and B are connected by a belt, um, which goes up and over drum C. So we're using a belt friction problem here. If box A has a mass of 300 kilograms, let's determine the maximum mass of box B, which can be hung without box A starting to slide up the incline. Um, we could also write this problem and say, what's the, the maximum before A? We start to fall down or the minimum before we fall down um, we're looking just one way we'll talk through a little bit on that second option in a bit but our coefficient of friction between all surfaces is 0.25 so that'd be at the drum and box a is touching our incline so we get friction here as well um, and we're going to assume that box a doesn't tip over so we're only dealing with sliding in here um, again if we're tackling belt friction let's get our equation written down we know our general equation is t2 equals t1 times e to the mu our coefficient of friction times beta um we'll have to deal with t2 and t1 as we go through everything um, mu we know that one was given to us um, mu for this is um, 0 0.25 mu equals 0.25 let's find beta so beta in here is a little bit tricky for this one. Let's get it in degrees and then convert into radians. People think better in degrees, so we're more likely to get that correct if we start in degrees and then switch to radians. Uh, but beta in radians is our contact angle. So we know if I came straight up and then out to the right, I would be in contact with that for 90 degrees. So let's start there. This is 90 degrees. Um, but that's only getting me, or that's ignoring, really I'm touching an additional amount as I come in here I'm touching this amount as well um, I'm in contact a little bit longer as that cable drapes over the drum and comes down if I know from horizontal up to my cable 60 degrees here then it's also 60 degrees up there that's our alternate interior angle so really beta would be our 90 from vertical to horizontal plus an additional 60 degrees plus 60 degrees or this is 150 degrees. Uh, if I convert that into radians, I would say this would get me that beta in radians, which is what I use in my equation, is my degrees 150 um, times, well, I know that there are pi radians for every 180 degrees. Pi over 180. My degrees would cancel. I'd be left with radians coming out here. Or this is 0 0.833 pi. 0.833 pi. Or 5 pi over 6 if we want a fraction there. But let's go with the decimal. Um, the other thing I need is I'm given a mass of my box. Let's convert that to a weight. My weight of A, W, A, should be, well, weight is mass times gravity. So 300. 300 times gravity, 9.81. Or the weight that I'm going to use here is 2943, 2943 newtons. And that sets up and gets me to the point that I can come in and start trying to do um, that box analysis. So let's start with the drum. If we're saying the box slides up the incline. So we have our drum, and we'll just sketch it in. This is drum C. On one side, I have a weight hanging down. That's my box B. So I can call this the weight of B. When I find that weight, I won't quite be done. I need a mass. We'll have to do one more conversion. We'll divide by gravity to get the mass out. On the other direction, though, I have a force in here. Um, and I'm not going to label that yet. Let's think through which one of these is T1 and which one is T2. So box A is about to slide up that incline. We know T2 goes in our direction of motion. I'm moving this direction, up the incline and around. This is my T2 right here. If my motion is going clockwise, motion, then WB in my problem is... T2. T2 equals WB. I'm not needing to write WB twice. Um, T2. That means the other side here is T1. 
However, because T1 is connecting into a box, it's sitting on an incline, it's not just free hanging out there, this isn't the way to box A. I'm going to leave that as T1 as a variable. And I'll have to figure out how do I find T1. But let's go ahead and relate these two pieces together right now. I know that T2, WB, equals T1, another unknown, times E to the 0.25 times 0.883 or 833 pi. So times 0.25 times 0.833 pi. Or let's simplify that down as far as we can get. Our WB is going to be 1.92 T1. 1.92 is just our E to the uh, mu beta calculation in there. I mean, that's really all the farther I can get. That is one equation. I'm relating my weight to T1 right now. Um, so how can I start trying to find T1? Well, why don't we come in and say, I could take a look at my box. If I drew a free body diagram of the box, hopefully I can figure out what's happening with it. So let's get our box. It's on an incline. We're just going to draw a rectangle on an incline. It's supposed to look like our box. Um, out here, coming off of this, I know I have a cable or a belt in here. It's going from the box up and around the drum. If as I leave the drum, that's T1, then coming to the box, there's nothing that's going to change that in there. This is T1 for me. Um, I also have a weight. should be going straight down. I'll put the weight in here, not the mass. And that should be... Um, WA, 2943 Newtons, 2943 Newtons, going straight down there. Um, I can also say at the ground, I have a normal force. Um, so perpendicular to the surface, I have N. Um, that should be 60 degrees right here, 60 degrees, because the ground is inclined at 60 degrees. So perpendicular, I'll just change that to measuring from vertical. So 60 degrees from vertical in here. I also, if I'm going to start sliding this up, I get friction resisting that motion. If my box is going up the incline, I have friction coming down that incline. And because we're about to start sliding, I can say that this is that maximum friction. This is my FS. FS should be mu times our normal force. Uh, mu 0 0.25 times our normal force n. Again, if we weren't about to slide, we couldn't say this, but our entire problem is based on when it's about to slide here. So we can't say this is mu times the normal force. Um, the one other thing I would do in here is let's rotate our axes. This will be a little bit easier if I come in and say, let's set this up so my x-axis goes parallel to the ground. That y-axis then goes perpendicular to the ground. And I'm doing that, or that's going to be easier in my opinion, because um, that our friction only goes in the x, the normal force is only in the y, our unknowns, we can do one equation, one unknown, and get them solved out. If I'm doing that, though, I need my weight. We'll have a x and a y component. This angle is 60 degrees. Uh, from y to straight up, I've rotated everything up 60 degrees, which means from vertical to y, I've rotated 60 degrees as well. Uh, but I have T1 and N in here. I can apply equilibrium and find T1. If I know T1, I can come back to my belt friction and find the weight of B. If I can find the weight of B, I can find the mass of B. So let's just start that out. I can sum my forces in the y direction. Summing forces in the y, I have well, n's entirely in the y, n. I have the weight, we'll have a y component. It's acting downwards or in the negative y direction. So we're going to subtract this off. Minus 2943 times that angle touches the y. So I need cosine here. Cosine 60 gets me to 0. Or our normal force, n is going to get us 1471, 1471.5 newtons. Um, with that known, I have my friction. Realistically, I just divide by 4, which means I can sum forces in the x and get T1 is my only unknown in here. So summing forces in the x direction. 
I'm going to have T1 entirely in the X, T1. Um, I have my friction is going to go entirely negative in the X, so minus Fs, minus 0.25N, 0 0.25 times 1471.5. And then my weight's going to have a X component as well. It's going to point in the negative X direction, so I have to subtract it off. Minus the weight 2943. Um, if we are using cosine for Y, then sine should go to our X. Sine 60 gets me to zero, which I can solve for T1, and I'm going to get the T1 equals um, 2916. 2916.5 um, newtons. Again, not an answer, but I can use that and come back up here now. So with T1 known, let's come back up and get to my weight of B is 1.92 times T1. 21 or 2916.5. Um, with that one known, I can get that my weight, that maximum weight of our box is going to be 5,612, 5612.03 newtons. Anything less than this in that box is not going to start moving up that incline. Anything more, it's just going to move up it faster. We'll get bigger acceleration coming in. But that becomes a dynamics problem, not a statics problem. So we don't worry about that here. Um, but our last thing would be, what's that mass? The mass of box B. Mass should be our weight, 56, 12.03, divided by gravity, 9.81. If weight is mass times gravity, then mass is weight divided by gravity. Um, that's going to get us to the maximum mass here. Mass of box B is... 572, 572.1 kilograms. So let's talk through really quick. Um, well, that's our answer to our problem. What would change if we were saying, what's our, our smallest weight before that box would start to slide down our incline? Well, we would change in our belt friction approach. Our motion would be the other direction. So we have to change T2 and T1 around. Uh, which would change this would become a t2 but also in our free body diagram here we'd actually want to draw a new one out because we have a different variable here but our friction if we're sliding down that incline friction should resist that and it's going to have to point up the incline so we're going to get a different friction force it's going to have a ton completely 180 different direction we'd add it into our x force uh, which would change things up a good bit in there um, but really two things we'd have to change big picture in here our motion and our so we flip T2 and T1 and our friction. But hopefully this is a useful video for us. If it was, stick around, watch some more videos, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get you an A with JJ.